The objective of this first exercise is to get all of the students in the class an initial exposure to the operation of a Haas milling machine and to get an understanding of the format and operation of the labs for the class. You won't learn everything you need to know about machine tool operation doing this lab, but you will get to make a part that you eventually get to take home with you. Now, by the time you're watching this lab video, you should have already gone through the other pre-lab materials, including taking our lab safety quiz. If you haven't done that yet, you should pause this video and do it. All of the ME1800 lab instructions are available on a SharePoint site hosted here at WPI and can be accessed several ways. The easiest way would be to go to your Blackboard site for the class, go to the lab materials page, click on the link to the ME1800 labs homepage. Alternately, you could type ME1800.com and it will redirect you to this site. Also, if you happen to be on one of the lab computers, you can go to the link on the desktop that brings you to the Manufacturing Labs SharePoint site, and from there you can click on the ME1800 Labs page. When you arrive in lab on the first day, you should gather in the computer classroom area at the beginning of the entrance of Washburn 107. As you get here, you should note that there's 12 or so computers in this area and 18 or so students registered in each lab section. Don't worry, there's always going to be some of you doing machining work and we have some more computers in another location. As you get started, you'll meet the PLAs for your lab section and they'll let you know if you're going to be on a machine tool or using a computer at the beginning of labs. Since we don't have 18 of each of the machines we're going to use in the lab, we can't have all of you doing the same exercise at the same time. Because of that, we've actually developed a pull system that brings the correct student to the correct machine when they need to be there. This system is maintained by the PLAs, and we have what's called a watch, do, teach list. The lists are actually on the SharePoint site, and you'll be able to look at them and know roughly when you're going to be doing a particular exercise. When you're not at a machine tool, you should be doing one of the CAM exercises that's been assigned. The CAM exercises are done using a software called Esprit. It's written and developed by a company called DP Technology, and it's only installed on the computers in this lab. You can install it on your own computer and even work from off campus as long as you connect to the WPI VPN. The CAM exercises have all been created here at WPI and are intended to be self-paced and to teach you about machining as well as about how to use the software. CAM exercises are due every week on Friday at 11.59 p.m. If you don't complete a particular exercise during your scheduled lab time, they're posted evening and Friday hours when the PLAs will be in the lab to help you. When you're working on an exercise, if you get stuck, first try to figure it out. Then look around. If someone near you is looking at an instruction that you haven't seen yet, they've probably already figured out the step that's giving you trouble. Ask them for help. Don't get frustrated. If they can't help you quickly, go find one of the PLAs. If the PLA can't help you, then they'll find someone who can. Likewise, when you're at a machine tool, ask for help when you need it. The only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Now let's look at the instructions for the first lab. Lab instructions will typically start with a picture of the finished part and an explanation of what we think is new to you in the exercise. Since this is the first exercise, we're assuming everything's new. It's not supposed to be hard, it introduces our policy and it helps students build some confidence in the use of the machine tool. We'll step through page by page now talking about the important things. The, uh, the first thing that we show you here in the lab exercise is how to fill out our operation checklist. Now the checklists are available from the SharePoint site. And click on it when you start. You're the operator, so put your WPI username. And if you're not sure if you spelled it right, you can check the names. It'll pop up. You need to say which machine tool you're using. 
Uh, for this lab exercise, you'll be using one of the mini mills. We'll say that we're using mini mill one for this example. And uh, you need to say if you're doing any non-standard operation that precludes completing one or more of the steps below. Well, it turns out that we are going to do a non-standard operation in this very first lab exercise, so you're going to have to check this. And then I would also want you to come down to the notes section and write any 1800 lab. That way, when we're reviewing the checklist later, we'll know that this is why it was non-standard. I'll explain what's non-standard about it when we get to that step in the instructions. So this checklist has five items on it that step you through the, uh, the five required safety steps that we have for every operator of a machine tool here at WPI. I have to do it. You have to do it uh, every time we run the machine. And we ask you to do this checklist any time that you've modified the program on the machine. Any time that you've altered the setup on the machine since the last time you ran the machine, uh, ran the program successfully, and any time that you've been away from the machine long enough that someone else may have altered the setup in the, since you last successfully ran the program. The, uh, the five required steps, I'm going to go through these quickly here, are to, to simulate in the CAM software. And so this tells us what the computer thinks the program is going to do. We're going to set the tool and the work offsets. So setting the tool offsets tells the machine tool how long the tools are relative to the spindle nose and uh, in some instances what the diameter of the tool is. The uh, Setting the work offset tells the machine tool where the work piece is in its work envelope when we start. We're going to simulate on the controller. This gives us uh, several piece of information. The, the most important one probably is whether or not we loaded the program correctly or loaded the program we thought we did. It also can help us uh, troubleshoot if we've uh, set the, the tool and work offsets correctly and uh, show us some other things. We're going to reduce the rapid rate. Now the rapid rate on the uh, on the machine tool is the speed at which the tools move from the beginning of one operation or from the end of one operation to the beginning of the next operation. And we're going to check the distance to go. Now this is probably the most important step on our checklist and if you do this step correctly it keeps you from crashing the machine even if you've messed up one of the other steps here. So we'll fill out our checklist as we go. Let's go back to our instructions. The, uh, the first step on the checklist is to simulate in the CAM software. Now instead of having you open up the CAM software one at a time, we've made a little video of the simulation here. So you're going to watch the video of the simulation before you run the part. And this lets you know what the computer thinks the program is going to do. The first tool comes down, it does a facing operation, a chamfer, and then an engraving. So that's pretty simple. We'll go back to our instructions. We're going to insert the workpiece. So this is pretty simple. We're going to put it in the collet chuck, which is already beyond the table of the machine tool. And then you're going to operate the red switch here, which will close the, tall, the collet. Now we're going to edit the code. And so this is sort of a non-standard step. And this is a, one of the reasons that we have to check the non-standard steps there. But what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to change this bit of code right here where it says AHS, you're going to change the AHS to be your initials. Once you're done with that, you're going to press the reset button to make sure the program is starting at the beginning. Then the next step on the checklist is to set the tool and the work offsets. Now we're not going to set the tool and the work offsets before we run the program because we've built right into the code where it automatically goes and measures all the tools and then locates the workpiece for you before it starts. We're going to simulate on the controller. So to simulate on the controller, you're going to go to the memory, press the memory button. You're going to press the setting graphics button twice. And then you're going to press cycle start and the program will, be, will simulate. It'll show a picture that looks similar to this. We're going to prepare to run the program. We're going to go to the memory mode again. We're going to press the current commands, and this will bring up a display that looks like this. We're going to press either the up arrow or the down arrow until the distance to go coordinate system is displayed here. 
and then we're going to reduce the rapid rate. So once we reduce the rapid rate to 25%, that gives us a chance to stop the program if something seems to be going wrong. We're now ready to run the program, and what we're going to do now is watch a video of the program running. So I said the, uh, the first thing that happens is the, uh, the tools and the workpiece get probed for you. So it operates the tool changer, it loads this eighth inch ball mill in the spindle and it comes down and it touches the top of the probe. Once it's done this, it will operate the tool changer again, select tool number six, which is a three eighths inch diameter, 90 degree drill point end mill. This is the tool that comes in and does the chamfer. So again, it touches the top of the probe goes up and down a couple times to make sure that it's measured the length of the tool. And it's going to go up, it's going to change to tool 8 now. Tool 8 is a 3 8 inch diameter end mill. The end mill again, like the others, comes down and touches the top of the probe. When it's done this, is going to operate the tool changer and change to tool 10, which is our spindle probe or our part probe. The first thing it does after it has the part probe here is it spins it around and turns it on and now it's jogging in what's called a safe mode. When it's in this safe mode, if it touches something, it stops moving. When you're handle jogging the probe in later exercises, it won't be in the safe mode when it's operating. So if, now it has uh, touched the top of the part and located the Z location for the top of the part. It now touches the four sides of the part and calculates what the center of those four points is and finds the XY location at the center of the part. So the, the work offset for this part is the top center of the workpiece. When it's done with the programming, it goes immediately into the uh, machining part of the program. The first tool comes in is the 3 8 inch end mill. It comes down and as it's coming down we hit the feed hold button and it stops it here. Then we look at the distance to go, which is about one inch, and the point that is going to Z equals 0 0.09 inches. And that's measured again from the top of the workpiece. So we look back in the machine and decide, does this make sense? It's going to go one inch. Is it about one inch away from the part? If it is, then we're going to tell it go ahead and we're going to press the green cycle start button and it will continue. It does facing operation. As it does this facing operation, it slowly spirals into the center of the part. It's going to operate the tool changer again for the chamfer mill. The chamfer mill comes down. We pause. We check the distance to go to make sure it makes sense. And then we can press cycle start to continue the machining operation. So I'm going to go back to step through our instructions here. So we'll watch the whole video. And then we are ready to press cycle start. Remember to check the distance to go for each tool that's approaching the workpiece and decide if it makes sense. When the program is finished, you'll activate the, uh, the red switch on the side, press the button, and that will release the collet. You can then remove your workpiece from the, uh, from the fixture. You want to inspect your workpiece, so look at the workpiece, decide if it makes sense, if it engraved your initials, and then check out with the lab instructor or the PLA who is uh, operating the watch do teach list to tell them that you are finished.